Welcome back co-spoilers, here we are again with another episode as we dive into the world of movies, oh wait, here's a glimpse. Maybe honestly I don't think anyone can tell what's happening. Are you ready to jump on this movie and enjoy the things that doesn't matter? Okay. Anyone knew Cameron Diaz? I mean if you're 1990s kid then for sure you know her as she got that video that got public and never got removed from the internet. She is way too gorgeous and very stunning whatever movie she starred at. So enjoy the show and be on your way. Three years ago, Cameron Diaz and Jason Segel worked together in a movie called Bad Teacher directed by Jake Kasdan. They had a great and suggestive connection on screen. She was the teacher in the film who was not good, a woman who drank a lot and was only working with children because she needed money to have surgery on her breasts. He was a laid-back gym teacher who could see her imperfections and tricks, but still wanted to spend time with her. It was a movie that only had one joke, but there were enough different versions and variations of that joke to make it somewhat enjoyable. Now, Diaz and Siegel are acting together again in a movie called Unique Tape, but their characters are so hard to understand as real people that it's difficult to even recognize them, let alone figure out if they have any fun, inappropriate chemistry. She is a married woman with two children who stays at home and writes a blog about her family, and not much else. He is her partner and he has a job at a radio station, possibly. They create a special recording to add excitement to their previously enthusiastic marriage. But it accidentally becomes available to the public. This movie only has one joke and it feels like it only has one joke. The idea behind it is fancy but ends up being unbelievable and full of problems in the story. Also. The way these foolish characters rush into a crazy all-night adventure to fix their mistake feels forced and not funny at all. Furthermore, the idea of creating a special tape and then feeling embarrassed about it seems outdated at this time, as if everyone involved didn't understand the current trends for maximum importance and originality about five years ago. There are many advanced devices available now that can help us make our own high-quality home cinema, and they are more common than ever. This is especially evident in the show called, Unique Tape. It is basically a very long advertisement for Apple products disguised as a harmless and heartwarming comedy about an old married couple finding each other again. The camera on the iPad is really good. It's sitting on top of a laundry basket as Diaz's Annie and Siegel's Jay mimic every pose from the popular 70s book called, The Joy of Unique. And the cloud is really impressive too. It can gather all kinds of digital information in a way that even the people who made this movie don't fully understand. Life was easier when Annie and Jay were young. We first see the couple in college, having fun and being intimate all the time. Their main characteristic is that they enjoy being different from each other. But maybe they did. Jumping forward 10 years, Diaz will be 32 even though she will actually be close to 42. This fact is not important and only a small thing that diverts the attention. They still have love and attraction for each other, but because of their responsibilities like work, children, school, and household tasks, they don't have as much time or energy to show their affection as intensely as they used to. It occurs. When Annie sends the children to grandma's house for the night, she and Jay try to have some fun together, but they struggle at first. After drinking a few shots of tequila, they end up making their own homemade adult video. Diaz and Siegel take off all their clothes and are willing to do any silly thing that happens, but there's something rigid about the way Kasdan directs these scenes and Siegel's acting overall. He has become noticeably thinner and more toned since he became famous for appearing naked in the movie, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, in 2008. However, he also seems to have lost his friendly and likable puppy-like personality. He seems very still and unmoving here like he's stuck in a wax shell. Jay said he would delete the video, but he not only forgets to do so, but he also unintentionally sends it to several people using a new syncing app. In one of the many made-up plot tricks that make this story keep going. Jay likes to give old iPads to his friends and family as presents. So now all these folks can use their silly behavior, which took place for three hours. Even though Unique Tape is only about 90 minutes, it feels much longer. In simple words, the script by Siegel. His friend Nicholas Stoller, and Kate Angelo, 
the backup plan, tells the story of Annie and Jay rushing around Los Angeles to find these tablets before anyone watches the movie. Well, apart from others. There is at least one person who has seen it and is sending Jay mysterious texts without revealing their identity in a side story that feels unnatural. Jay continuously makes poor choices, causing annoyance for Annie. Rob Corddry and Ellie Kemper, who portray the best friends of the couple, join them in their journey but are not utilized well. The entire process is very long and boring, but one of the places they visit, which is like a long detour, is so surprising and exciting that it adds much needed excitement to the movie. Annie and Jay go to Hank Rosenbaum's fancy mansion. Hank is the CEO of a company that is interested in paying a lot of money for Annie's blog. Hank likes to wear cardigans. Annie surprisingly gave her iPad to Hank. Now, she needs to knock on his door and keep him busy while Jay looks for the device. At first, it may seem like a joke to cast Lowe, who had a scandal with a private recording in the late 1980s. But as you get to know his character more, you start to see how complex he is compared to everyone else. This shows how skilled Lowe is at playing supporting roles. I won't spoil what happens between Diaz and Lowe, but I can tell you that they have a strong connection as actors. And this video is very surprising and worth watching. The movie wants to make sure we know that the couple's relationship is happy and only involves one partner. Before any funny or sexual video can be shown, we have to be given a lot of information about their marriage, starting from when they first met in college. Siegel and Diaz act as students in a natural way, without looking obviously younger through heavy makeup, and they have a lot of sex. They get married and have children, Jay becomes successful in the music industry and Annie's honest, bold blog about being a modern mother becomes extremely popular, to the point where a big company wants to buy it. However, they will only do so if she presents herself in a more respectable manner. Oh. It takes a lot of effort to show that they are good people who have a normal interest in having sex in their marriage. This is done to make them likable and show that they genuinely want to make their sex tape. Because of this, there is not enough room for comedy. This doesn't mean that some jokes don't come up sometimes. Jay's friend Robbie, who is played by Rob Corddry, is very impressed with the tape because it is three hours long and shows every position in the joy of sex. He is amazed at how long it is, just like the movie Lincoln. However, that is a rare instance where the script makes fun of sex, although it does so in a subtle and mild way. Mostly, it is a funny and silly story about their desperate efforts to get all the iPads, all the copies, and completely hide the video file. This story is about Annie going to meet her boss, Hank. Hank is a boring person who wears glasses. But, surprisingly, he is actually a wild and crazy person. However, he doesn't have any funny lines. Finally, a sleazy person who makes money from online pornography, portrayed by Jack Black, talks to the couple about how unhappy people usually make sex tapes. You can tell he's sleazy because he smokes an e-cigarette, which is becoming a common trait for rebellious characters on screens. He talks seriously about Paris Hilton and Pamela Anderson, who are suspected of purposefully sharing their videos, unlike our innocent heroes. Their video showing them having sex, and the movie based on that video, are not particularly funny or appealing. Jake Kasdan's movie doesn't have any cynicism or irony which could have made the topic more interesting. Instead, it always wants us to believe that Annie and Jay are kind and loving individuals. Kindly, they have feelings for each other. However, it is not apparent why we should be concerned about them. Thanks for watching our video. As we wrap things up, we want to say a big thank you for being a part of our awesome community. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on our future adventures. We appreciate all the likes, comments, and support you've given us. It's because of viewers like you that we're able to keep creating great content. So stay tuned for more exciting videos coming your way. Remember, you're the reason we do what we do. Without you, our channel wouldn't be the same. So, until next time, take care, stay awesome. And keep spreading the positivity. See you soon.